Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, I'm going to be covering the concept of UV stretching, how to identify it, why it's important, and then ultimately how to fix it. So first, how do we identify UV stretching? Well, the way we identify it is first to make the UV editor a little wider because by default, this option is generally hidden. So we have display, it's the display button up here, and just come down to advanced and click the stretch button. Once we click that, we do have two types of stretching that we can look at, but for now, let's look at angle. What we notice is most of this is now a dark blue where it was once clear, and that's really good. What we want is dark blue stretching because that means that the general size and shape of the angle or area of the face has not changed. And that's what we want. We want it to be exactly what it appears like in the 3D model. But as far as angles are concerned, this is probably just fine, even though we do have a little bit of green here. What is far more important is the area stretching. So if we switch over to the area option, what we notice is that we have a few spots of dark blue, but mostly we're in the greens and the yellows. And if we zoom in down here on the mouth, we see we're even in the oranges and reds. And the closer we get to red, that means the further we've been pulled away or that face has been pulled away from its original shape. So there are a couple of things we can do about that. But before we get into that, let's talk about why UV stretching is such an important thing and why we need to pay a lot of attention to fixing it. Okay, so to identify why UV stretching is such a big deal, let's head on over to the texture paint workspace. Now, right now, what I've done is I've just added a material, which is just a UV checkered grid. These squares are the exact same size, and if we had a good UV stretch, then the size of the square would be the exact same regardless of where it is on our model. However, if we take a good look at the monkey head, we can see that areas that have a lot of stretching to them, the UV grid has been stretched out over that area as well. And so now they're not the exact same size and they're not small like we have on the ear here. They're actually much larger and stretched out. And that is unfortunate because what that means is that if we were to apply a texture to this area, even if we got really detailed in an area, it would be stretched out if we don't fix that stretching. So UV stretching causes texture to be stretched in different directions. It's not something that we really, really want. So let's go back to the UV editing workspace and talk now about how we fix UV stretching. All right, fixing stretching is pretty simple, but it's a lot of trial and error. So I'm gonna show you two things that we can do, and then we're just gonna unwrap the monkey head manually. So real quick, a lot of the issues with the scaling can be fixed if we just go to UV and then average island scale. And when we do that, what we see is the scale of the linked mesh island becomes a little bit more like what it actually exists uh, in the 3D viewport. So we have a much bigger face and head section, the ears are now a lot smaller, and the eyes also got smaller, which actually helped us with our stretching quite a bit. If we want to take that even further, we have the option then to kind of pack in islands here and try to put them in the UV map in a way that links them pretty close together and takes up as much of the space as it possibly can while maintaining the correct or the current scale. We've tried both of those things. It's helped the scale out a little bit, but there's still some issues with the scaling uh, and with the stretching of the UV islands. So what ultimately we need to do is unwrap this thing manually. So remember to unwrap manually, we just select some edges here. And I'm gonna select along the uh, back of the head, starting at the brow, just because this is generally how you will see faces unwrapped. And we're gonna take this all the way down to the chin here, the very bottom of the chin, and I'm just gonna mark these as seen. Now, when I do that, if we re-unwrap, you'll see that the monkey head is slightly more stretched out in areas, but it's a lot more connected, which follows rule uh, number two, which remember, rule number one is as little stretching as possible. Rule number two is, are the islands as connected as possible? So this is a pretty good way to start. And then we'll take here and we'll go along the uh, mesh 
circle piece for the inside of the ear. Now something to keep in mind is that all I did there was select the edge loop and actually I want to go ahead and select this outer edge loop here. And you can do that by just alt selecting and then I'm going to remove the ear from the monkey's head entirely. So I'm just going to select all of these things so that what I have selected goes all the way around the ear and leaves this section conjoined. So now we'll mark that as a seam. And then to do the exact same thing on the other side, what I want to do is select and then mirror, which is control shift M, which will allow us to select the mesh in the exact same position on the other side and also mark that as a seam pretty quickly. When we do that and re-unwrap, we now have two ear sections, two eye sections, and we have a face section. Now we can unwrap this a little bit further. We could come back up here, say, hey, average those island scales, pack the islands a little bit better, and it would do its job. So now we need to look at what are some other places that we have uh, issues with, with the stretching. And we can try to fix these manually. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to just link up the selection here. I'm going to grab this face or these two faces. And I'm going to scale up. Oh, let's turn off proportional editing. And I'm going to scale these two faces out a little bit, which it's not keeping it selected. So you know what? Let's turn proportional editing back on and start scaling. But then zoom in proportional editing so that as we scale, it's affecting the faces around it. And you can see I can try to get closer to that blue, but as I move these, there's gonna be a median point where I can get rid of the red, but ultimately everything else around it will go kind of orange. So we'll try to kind of reach that point where the stretching is there, but it's minimized. And we can kind of do the same thing down here with these mouth vertices and faces, we can stretch this area out a little bit, getting it closer, and just try to remove all the red that we can. Now this is a pretty decent UV map. It's pretty decently uh, de-stretched, so I would be okay to go ahead and start texturing this myself, but you can always add in new seams and everything to try and get a better unwrap, and then, just to make the UV map a little bit nicer, I'm just going to select everything and rotate it negative 90 degrees. So now I have a UV island that if I wanted to export it or paint directly onto the UV map itself, I can see exactly what's going on and not have to worry about turning everything 90 degrees. All right, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and this has been uh, the video on stretching and a little exercise in unwrapping a more complicated object.